Welcome back to Pastor Earl's Talk. Again, I'll be your host. I'm Dr. Ken. Again, with me as always is Apostle Gore. But our special Hallelujah. guest, and this took us to a different level, is the prophet herself, Prophet. Thank you so much for coming out. Lashana is in the house with us. Yep, that's Pastor Lashana, Prophet Lashana. And of course, we Glory. have the Pastor Ruth, and of course, my friend, Pastor Will, will stay Hallelujah. with us. So let's begin. I, we got a lot to talk about. We got an anointed panel, and I wanted you to pay attention on the words. We closed just a minute ago with our words will give us the breakthrough. So we, we're going to step in, and this time, believe it or not, I can't be this spiritual. We, I just stumbled in my notes, look at my notes, that miracles and the harvest and we're actually talking about jesus how he ministered the woman at the well but it's not about what you think about her it's more about what he did and that's what you need to do in your words so watch this i'll start with the apostle remember when jesus was ministering to the woman at the well the disciples returned with food and they're wondering why he was no longer hungry and i'll start you with a john 432 we always have to have scripture so we teach the word when we know where the scripture is we can start mimicking the word and memorizing this scripture. that's what gets us out of our uh, our circumstances we're repeating the word back to God what he says is the answer and that's when the an answer manifests so and also the second thing is you have to have anointed guests like I do Pastor Will, of course, anytime, and of course the prophet, uh, uh, the apostle and pastor, it makes me sound more spiritual. So if you're hosting a show, you get people like this to be on it with it, and you sound really good. So uh, uh, John 4, 32, Jesus says, I have food to eat, which you do not know. The disciples thought somebody else had brought him food. Here's where I'm going. Verse 37, he explains, apostle to you, my food is not to do the will of him. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. I to finish his work verse 35 he tells us that uh, lift up your eyes look at the fields they're already white with harvest in other words he's talking about saving souls what are we here for to save souls I believe Jesus was showing through his own experience that he was reaching out to the lost that's where we need to get to your thought apostle hallelujah and it says in Matthew 4 4 he says but he answered and said it is written Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's it. So, you know, the thing is, is that as we read the word of God, God gives us that word so we, that we know truth. And when you experience truth, when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, that gives you that, that urge, the utterance to go and, and to go. You know, the Holy Spirit will lead you to a person to even pray That's for it. them. And, and he will lead you to go and fish to be a fisherman, you know, to catch those souls. Because remember, as you were lost in the world, there are many people that are lost still. And you need to be, now that you are saved, now that you have the blood of Christ in you, now you can go and preach and prophesy and lead those souls and, and lead them to Jesus. Because that's, that's why we're here. We're not, I'm not here just to be a prophet or apostle or to be a cook. I'm here because God put me here. He destined me to go and prophesy, to go and heal the sick, mm. to claim, you know, get those people out of captive and lead them to, so that they can have eternal life with him. That's the reason why we're here. Amen. 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 I thought it was for the free fruit. That's why I came. But <laughs> the true nourishment <laughs> and satisfaction too. is in our lives. So the priority is this prophet. A, a Jesus is talking about reaching the lost. There's also wages and rewards given to those who haven't experienced until they actually go. So we have to go to experience the reward, the wage that he promised us. The enemy says, and when Pastor Ruth and I were talking about it, don't go, we're not prepared. Interesting thought, but it, it means that in the going, God equips us and anoints us for that harvest for the fields. Now, nobody knew what I was going to talk about. I was thumbing through my notes. We just finished off the last program that rolls right in. So it's the words in our mouth that gets the people to plant the seed, what God is doing in their lives. Your thought, Amen. Um, two things. So uh, commenting off what you said, Dr. Ken, um, oftentimes I found in my personal life is that when God has equipped you for something, it's the enemy will come with the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear to prevent you from stepping, so true, so stepping true. forward into what God wants you to do so that way the vision doesn't come to pass. 
the thing, the purpose thing that needs to be birthed doesn't come forth, or it's or it comes out at the mm -hmm. wrong time. And just like a mother who is in labor, if you give birth prematurely, then there's issues that the child has to endure. Um, and uh, so I would just encourage you to, when you hear the lead, the leading of the Holy Spirit to telling you to move, move, move. Don't Amen. wait. Don't second guess yourself Amen. because anything that comes after that is either your own intellect or it's the voice of Satan and the adversary preventing you from moving forward. That's now, right on. Hallelujah. And um, going back to what uh, Prophet Korah said about um, the, ver the scripture in Matthew, we shall not, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every uh, word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I believe that that is important because we cannot be effective for the people if we're not feasting on the right kind of food. And just mm. like in the natural, if so we good. are eating things that cause sickness and disease mm. and bad health, then how can we be effective to our family, to those that God are sending us to? We can't be. Sometimes we end up being uh, paralyzed or bedridden or whatever the issue is. Same thing spiritually. If we're feeding on the things of the world mm. and not the words that God is wanting and not his word, then we are, um, there's a battle within us, flesh against spirit. And so when you step to try and minister to someone, you can confuse them in what God will want them to do because you're ministering out of the wrong spirit. And that's a good word. That's yeah, really hallelujah. good. Now remember, apostle, or a prophet was with us a year ago. She's never spoke publicly. Has it been about a year? Glory to and God. look at the it's spiritual <laughs> superstar. But that's what I'm talking about. In the going, yeah. here's living Amen. proof. Here's Amen. fruit right now Amen. that she stepped out in the harvest anointing and will take care of all the problems. So it's in the going. Hear me, church. I've heard of countless stories of people that got healed. They said, I'm too sick to serve. Are you sick? I'm asking. Could it be the Lord wants us to know why we want to be healed? Think about it. Is it, uh, Pastor Ruth, for us for a long life or others to serve God? What it, I mean, what are we looking for? I believe the harvest is the hour is so right that we reach out to touch the lost, but we also have to find nourishment and healing and deliverance for ourselves. Pastor, to you, is there a harvest healing miracles waiting for you? Your thought. Ah, amen. I believe that because it says um, to do unto others what you would have others to do unto you and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We have to love ourselves in a good way as far as taking care of ourselves and feeding ourselves on God's word, spending time with the Lord because we can't yes. reach out and give something to somebody that we don't have ourselves. Yeah. We have to know who we are That's good. in the Lord Jesus. We have to spend time with him, the bread of life, and have the living water. He said that those that believed in him, the rivers of living water would flow from their That's bellies really in the book of John, and we have to have that. So we need that time with him. We need to know who we are in him so we can give that and be geysers of living water and give the bread of life and the bread of heaven too. People, it, like um, Prophet Chandra said, in the correct way, because we don't want to be ministering in anything except for the Lord Hallelujah. and the Holy Spirit. We don't want to yes, be giving Lord. our yes. own opinion or what we think. We want to be giving the word, the true word of God, the bread of life, to the people that are lost and that are hungry, just like Jesus gave the water to the woman at the well and said that. If you knew who I was, remember that you would, I would give you... You would ask for this water, and no. you would never thirst again. Amen. Yes. And we want to be Amen. giving that to people so that they can come to the Lord and they can know who they are in Him and be set free and delivered. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good work. Dr. Last not but not least, the course the pastor himself will. Hallelujah. If Hallelujah. we're hungry for God and refuse to be satisfied, following Jesus into the harvest, and we find meat to eat, that's not only finding to reaching out for the loss. What are you waiting for? Pastor, your thought. What are we waiting for? You know, so many times it's not that we're waiting for something. A lot of times the enemy has us in bondage. The right, yeah. We're so busy looking at circumstances <laughs> and situations and things, we can't even think about anything. And that is what the enemy is supposed to do. Because as long as the enemy has you focusing on things and stuff and other things around you, it's hard to have a vision for the call of God on your life. And so 
one of the things we're here on the panel, we're just bringing up personal real life situations, things in which we walk through. Because one thing we know about the devil, he's the same yesterday, today as he is forever. He's, he's not doing That's anything good. new. He's an imitator, not a creator. Mm. Amen. And one thing we know for a fact, as long as you are in bondage and you can't see the call of God on your life, or you feel you are not called, or you feel that you cannot step out there, then the enemy is winning. Because for every time that you just allow the enemy come against you, there's so many souls of people out there waiting for you to get it together. There's people that are waiting for you to come out mm. and touch their lives Amen. in a great and special Amen. way. That's it. You got to realize for the hard times that you're going through right now, think about it. Why would the enemy even come against you to give you the hard times? Who are you in the spirit realm? Amen. You're a powerhouse in the spirit realm. That's why there's so many things coming against you. And you have to realize the call of God on your life is so great that the enemy is doing everything he can to blind you from seeing what is out there. Because the harvest is great. And they're out there and they're plenty. But the laborers are few. And that's why we need you to take the time to step out there with power and realize these are just distractions and be focused on doing what God has called you to do. Good thought. Hallelujah. Since we're pressed for time, and I've got so many anointed people wanting to just go right into prayer. What are you believing for? Is it a financial breakthrough? Is there hope for your loved ones to come back? Are your kids living from God? We're running from God. Also, is are we having a problem with our uh, job situation, or we're thinking about starting a business, or our health is just not there? We feel like we can't minister, or we can't step out for God. Let me uh, start with this, and we'll ask the apostle to pray, and I'll run down the list. God is not mysterious. Bible is clear. We overcome strongholds of His creation. We're free the captives. We heal the sick. We comfort the brokenhearted. Look around. What is missing? No pain, no tears, no cancer, no poverty, no hunger. Think about it. Simply, what do we do? Matthew 7, 7 gives us the answer. Knock and you receive. You can read it for yourself. Holy Spirit will teach you. John 14, 27. Partner with heaven. How do we do it? We ask, how do we move through? How can you move through us now, Holy Spirit? Or... What can I do to impact the situation for the kingdom of God? For you, prophet or uh, apostle, t t speak to the people. What's their breakthrough? What are you sensing, God? Is it financial? Is it relationship? Is it uh, health? What, what are you sensing? <laughs> well, I think I'm kind of going through all of that stuff right now because really um, I, I believe that because I'm a single person right now, that God is really keeping me focused on relationships and to encourage the body of Christ to be his bride first and not to be looking elsewhere and wondering, okay, well, does it, do I want that man of God or do I want that man or, you know, whatever it is. No, you know what? The thing is that you need to be the bride of Christ. You need to stay focused on God. And that's for everything. I mean, even for your finances. If, if you're having, you know, finances, you know, whatever it is, and you just need to focus on God and trust him. It says in Psalms, 37 3 and 4 it says to trust the lord with all your heart and and he will give you the desires of your heart good work so good work. i just want to encourage you tonight right. just to trust god no matter what it is your financial breakthrough you know if it's a relationship if it's spiritual if it's um just with your children whatever it is you know what god will do it for you you just have to seek the kingdom of god first and he will answer you he will answer your prayer I'm telling you right now, and that's what I'm praying for you, that it shall be done in Jesus' name. Amen. That's so powerful. Wow, you, that's really a good apostle. So all those single men that come here, they're not for you, they're for Pastor Will? Is that what you're <laughs> Maybe to give them some wisdom. Hallelujah. <laughs> he is a great mentor. You are, Pastor Will. A prophet, your thought, what are the people, what is God showing you? Um, glory, glory to God. Two things, actually. One is... Um, it's an attack that's going on in the mind of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. And what God wants us to do is to not take the, take the warfare personally. And this is something that blessed me by Dr. Juanita Bynum when she said, um, she shared something with her Facebook page and she said that the warfare comes with the vision. So 
if we can get out of a place, and now this is me, these are my words, if we can get out of a place of taking these attacks so personally, taking the warfare so personally when it comes, we'll be more effective in, in fulfilling that vision because it's not about us. So the enemy is not That's attacking good. you because he feels like, oh, Lashana, you know, no. He's attacking because of what God has placed in me and what he knows God wants to birth in me and how he knows that what God has put in me for me to purpose that he's purposed for me to birth, that it's going to touch billions of people and change the lives of billions of people and their families and generations to come. Um, so I want to encourage you all with that. Do not take the warfare personally. But if anything, be encouraged that you know that Satan has been attacking you now yes. more than any, Say that. any Say time that. in your yes. life come on. because Amen. you are right at That's the it. cusp of a breakthrough. Yes. And yes. it's going to change the lives of many people that are connected Amen. to you. In addition to that, Dr. Ken spoke about healing earlier um i want to share this some of you have caught the healing like um and sickness and infirmities that's a spirit god jesus died on the cross for our sicknesses for our sins Amen. and by yes. his blood we shall be healed ah. so Amen. everything that's coming against you in mm -hmm. your physical body it's not yours so do not claim it like oh I have these issues or my physical, sometimes people say, um, oh, my thyroid or my this. Mm -mm. That doesn't belong to you. It's mm. like a game. Amen. Imagine it being That's a right. game of dodgeball. And so we have to duck, dodge, maneuver so we don't get hit. But sometimes we do. Mm. And the only mm. thing that's going to happen is we might get bruised up a little bit, but it will heal. It will go away. Amen. And so don't receive the... Uh, um, use the wisdom of God when it comes to hearing from the doctors. Take the wisdom even from the doctors. Do what you have to do to heal yourself, but do not receive that sickness as it's mm. your own mm -hmm. because it's mm -hmm. not. Mm. In Jesus' name. Mm. Say, Amen. Wow, that's really good. Uh, Pastor, your thought, what is God showing you to give the people a breakthrough, some hope? Uh, what is your prayer for the people? Amen. Well, I just wanted to pray but that everybody would know, um, and I totally agree with um, what Pastor, what Prophet, um, Prophet Lashandra is saying. When we're going through trials, um, Jesus said in the Beatitudes of Matthew 5, he said, Blessed are you when you are reviled and mocked and persecuted. Call all manner of yes. evil falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly mm -hmm. glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. So we know that this is this part of serving the Lord that we will go through trials. We will be attacked. We will go through persecution. But he said, rejoice and be glad for great is your reward in heaven. And then when he's telling the disciples how to pray in the Our, all, the our Father, he says, um, on earth thy kingdom come, thy will be done on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. So we know that it's going to be, those rewards are not just in heaven it's on earth also on earth as Hallelujah. it is in heaven we all will be rewarded now Amen. and the bible says in um psalms 23 that he prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies mm. and our Hallelujah. enemies are as it says in ephesians 6 we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but powers principalities the rulers of the darkness of this age spiritual wickedness in high places and god is pre preparing a literal table for you with whatever you need on it what you're praying for in the presence of those enemies so rejoice amen he your breakthrough is coming it's coming soon according to god's word and it says in proverbs 21 30 and 31 it says there is no wisdom no insight no plan that can succeed against the lord the horse is made ready for battle but victory rests with the lord so we take all of god's word not just part of it yes we'll be persecuted we'll go through trials but we have victory also and that victory is for you as you speak out god's word you stand on god's word you don't go by what you see you don't go by what you feel and i'm learning that myself i go by faith we know by faith that we're saved and as prophetess um, Lashana was saying we know that we're healed according to god's word in isaiah 53 verse 5 as she was saying so we trust in all of god's word amen as we walk by faith not by sight. And the Bible says in Hebrews 11:6, without faith it's impossible to please God. So we have to have God's word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing coming, comes by the word of God. As we trust in God, hear his word. You speak it out. Trust it. Believe in him. You have victory. It's already yours in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good.
good word. I was talking to uh, Pastor Ruth about memorizing the Bible. She gave you half of it right now. That was well <laughs> yes, done. She went there. That was. It's too bad we didn't have another two hours. Pastor, your <laughs> final thought as we close, and give me a minute to close it up. Well, I was just keying in off the, what Prophet Lashana said. She was stating how the minds of the people, it's always a battle in your mind. And what I'm asking right now, there's some of you out there saying, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. And that is true. I don't. I do know the enemy, and I do know the enemy is trying to stop you. And that's real. And you know it's real because you feel the pain. And so what I'm asking everybody out there to do right now, just close your eyes and just take all those negative thoughts and everything running through your mind and just embrace it right now and say, Lord, I just ask you, those things that I'm dealing with, bring it to the forefront of my mind right now. And it's real. Some of you out there crying. Some of you out there just, I can't believe this. I'm going through this. Some of you even mad at God. But let me show you what the God of this world can do. And this God is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not the enemy. It is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He reigns and rules on this earth. Lord, I just declare right now, every person that has all those thoughts at the forefront of their mind right now. I just declare and decree a supernatural miracle where you will erase all those negative thoughts and everything associated from their mind right now. And Lord, I ask for the Prince of Peace to come in. Now, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. See, a lot of times those harassments, they have, they're not real. The enemy is just plaguing you with these negative mm -hmm. thoughts and it's not real. And God can erase that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing you got to realize, the enemy will sow a thought, but that doesn't mean you have to focus mm -hmm. on that thought. Yes. Because Absolutely. if you feed it, right. it will grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know one thing a friend of mine used to always tell me, he says, either you are the solution to your problem. Are you your problem? Mm -hmm. And I always ask, I don't want to be either. I'm going to let my Lord direct me Amen. to be able to destroy the whole situation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's always the solution Amen. to the Amen. problem. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Good word. Let me close with the last thought since I'm so the last spiritual one left. And I use the word lightly. Proverbs 11.25. These are the two that Pastor Ruth did not quote. So I'll give them to you. <laughs> the generous soul will be made rich. And he, waters will, uh, he who waters will be watered also himself. So in other words, if you're generous, if you water others, if you encourage others like Apostle Quora always does, all of us here at Vision TV and you folks out there, you'll be watered as well. So everything that you send out to others will come back to you. And 1 Corinthians 10, 24, let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. In other words, amen. if we look to others, if we help others, God will take care of our own needs. Amen. amen. Until next week, I'm amen. Dr. Ken. Of course, the apostle's God always with you. me. The prophet herself and Pastor Ruth giving us the whole Bible. And my dear friend, <laughs> Pastor Will, please come God back and be you. with us. Next Wednesday and Friday, you will see him on Vision TV. We'll see you next week. Good night. God bless Good night. you. God bless God you. God bless you. Bless. Okay, Terrell. Terrell.